Well, okay, by now you've installed your packages of bees, maybe you got your nuke installed, and you're probably thinking, I'm sitting pretty good, all is well, right? Not so fast. I know a lot of you think all you got to do is kind of dump some bees in a box, you know what I mean? And you kind of put your five frame nucleus in another deep box, and you just kind of let them grow, and you keep giving them room to expand. And you might be thinking, okay, you know, that's all I need to do, it's all good. Today, we're going to talk about all the various things that are very common that happen to bees that most beekeepers don't have an eye to identify. And I'm going to help you understand not only how to identify them, but I'm also going to put something in your hand that you can actually take out to the hive with you on your phone and actually scroll through the various things that you might be seeing and compare it to what you're looking at on, on your phone and think, uh-oh, I've got a problem. Plus, we're gonna get on an airplane and fly out to Beltsville, Maryland and visit, take a tour through where all the beekeepers send their bees to be ran through a lab and see if they're sick or healthy, the Beltsville, Maryland Bee Lab. I'm David Burns, EAS Certified Master Beekeeper. And if you find value in my channel because I'm trying to get you to keep healthier bees and make fewer mistakes, please subscribe because this channel can be very valuable to help you keep your bees alive this year. Oh, and I wanna tell you about Super Thanks. I know it sounds crazy, but it might really be something that will help you feel better about some of you say, man, what you told me was priceless. Well, now you can say thanks and leave a little $2 tip or something. It's just located below what you're looking at here. See the word thanks, you can click on that. And when you do, you can make a little donation to me. And your comment has a cool little feature attached to it because you have given me a little donation. If you want to do that, you know. Now let's get on an airplane and let's head to Maryland. And I'm actually in the Beltsville, Maryland Bee Lab. Let's take a tour. Hello. Now this is Hello. Jay. Jay, uh, right. you are quite the researcher, I understand. Uh, Worked a few here. decades here? I've been here 22 years, wow. so I have a yeah. longevity record, if nothing else, and yeah. we're looking at honeybee health issues, variety of issues with uh, bacteria to viruses to mites. Do you do a lot of work with mites? Yep, yep, we're trying to do mites, and then especially now uh, viruses that are carried by sure. mites. Sure. So this is where the bees come this is where to get bees tested. Come. Sorry, come. Yeah, here's that a sample there. Today. Uh, a little too late for the show today. Oh yeah. It's a, um, wow. It's from Florida. This particular sample. So Good. I have to leave uh, a description sample. below how people can send their sample yeah, there. Yeah, have, have, have it on your website. Them. There's yeah. a website link yeah. Yeah. on yeah. how to get them. Um, this is our, our hall of shame of different diseases that have come through. There are the others, Brawla, the bee louse, yeah. and other um, yep. arthropods, triple A labs, which of course we did not find in country, but Thank uh, we hope not to. Oh yeah. Uh, but we're doing a little work on that. Oh uh, yeah, it's like small high beetle larvae. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, we have those, we have wax moth samples. What a collection um, of terrible are, things. Yeah, and speaking of terrible things, this, these are all, um, isolates of American fowl brood. Oh so, gosh, yeah. So these are, you know, not not for <laughs> not for experimentation per se, yeah. but just to save to kind of uh, to see what they are. Sam checks for antibiotic resistance. Yeah. So we have some of that these have all been vetted for antibiotic resistance oh, I and see. and this confirmed to be American fowl brood. That's that's how this uh yeah. this service got going because uh it literally a century ago there needed to be one place to definitively say whether people had American fowl brood. Because oh, that was yeah. the only game in town until it was, the yeah. 80s, right? So right, yeah. the biggest game. Oh, uh, yeah. And it's still actionable, so yeah. that's uh, one of the main results is he looks for that and, and very yeah. carefully checks for that. We've so how many samples do you think like this they get per week? You, you uh, so it's seasonal. Okay. We get over 2,000 a year, maybe okay. two to 3,000 wow. a year. Peak, that's a lot, that's a lot. Active. Okay, so this is so, the Honey Bee Genetics Lab. Yeah. Oh, this is your for, for, your yeah, room. For yeah. lack of a better name, so I do mostly genetics, but also right now our big hunt with uh, Judy and myself and uh, visiting scientist Eugene Ryalba, who is just down the hall. Yeah. Are looking for antivirals uh, medicines and treatments. So we're doing a lot of work. We did a lot of cup studies. Bees, thirty to fifty bees in a cup where we know they had virus and we try to clear the virus by feeding them something in a sugar drip 
drip really? solution. Really? Wow. We've been getting uh, pukey from Florida, actually, from a really great, nice beekeeper, uh, Tecca Savio, who lives in Florida, and she, uh-huh. she will send us comb. We'll pull the pupae out of those comb, and they're clean, they're healthy, but we inject them with virus, and then in those injected pupae, we can co-inject the medicine and see if we get a change in the virus level. So these wow. were all ones um, oh, yeah. from last month, and they go into here with these beads pulverized, and then we check them for, for virus loads, and, and we use this uh, fancy machine here. Um, so you're you're essentially trying to treat for viruses and reduce the viral load. That's the dream. Wow. Yeah, yeah there's no uh, currently known antiviral, so yeah. we're just... Um, we're checking literally hundreds of candidate compounds. Yeah. Uh, we thought naively we'd find something, you know, check a few that have been used, and, yeah. and we yeah. just realized the way of chemistry wow. and disease and yeah. medicinal things is you've got to just, it's brute force. So we, we economized. We basically went from these cup studies with the live bees to the pupae and then and various ways of, of making it a bit more efficient. Are you uh, looking at particular viruses? Or? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. We're really just focused on deformed wing virus okay. right now, yeah. Yeah. partly because it's so frequent and impactful, but also we have great tools to study it. Yeah. Um, I think that Dr. Ayava came here with an expertise in that virus, and Judy Chen has worked on it for yeah. a long time. So this is, uh, yeah, in this laboratory, we run checks, quantitative checks for viruses mm. and Nosema serrani. Um, okay. And it's staffed by the University of Maryland through the Be Informed Partnership, okay. and funded by USDA AFIS. So they're um, oh, yeah. our sister agency within USDA, and it's it's been going for now 12 years and has a wealth of data. So this is where you keep all your lunches and Coke, yeah, yeah, Coca Colas. No food allowed. Not oh, food no food, food allowed. allowed. Yeah. Darn. But I mentioned the experiments with the. Um, oh wow, that looks cold. Yeah, it's super cold. Wow. So we have um, a couple more here. Oh. These, these oh. are bee pupae. Um, oh. Let's see, this is from the 26th. The plates in the lab were from oh. the 21st. So about once a week, we'll, we'll inject the younger bee pupae with the virus and it would be medicine. Yeah. And again, we're just we're trying to not be biased at the start. We're going to just chunk through all the uh, candidates we can. Yeah. So it involves just a lot of repetition, injecting these, and then we count the virus level. We measure the virus levels in each. So the year. viruses are on those now. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they've they've uh, sadly they all get the virus, and then in freezing them, that cold has no effect on the virus. Uh, it just preserves it for the test. Actually, you know, the virus is still infective after this time. The bees right. are dead. Yeah. Um, but you could you could grind up those bees and and use it again. This is Miguel Corona's lab, and I just want to show you real quick. So he's yeah. So Miguel Miguel has a he's a physiology background, but he also is a really good beekeeper and and does stuff in the field. These are honey, but he um, he's working on new diets for honey bees and also their effects. And I, he's always got some. Now again, this is not human food, so yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. He's always got different types of pollen. Yeah, um, yep. I recognize that. You know, other, other uh, additives that he's trying out with the pollens to try to make it a little more nutritious. So. Oh, yeah. But he's, uh, yeah, he's a good... Uh, Is he working with bee nutrition then? Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow, so nice. He's, he's understanding this nutritional stress as a research question, but also trying to get... Uh, supplements of some sort. Excellent. Well, I hope you enjoyed the tour of the Beltsville, Maryland Bee Lab. And that's where you want to send bee samples of your bees if you think they're sick or you're just wondering if your bees are okay or not. I want to uh, give a shout out to Jay for letting us tour, taking us on that tour. That was really great. And I want to give a shout out to Kim Mechalik that also took picked me up at the airport, arranged the Bee Lab meeting for me, and uh, took me out there. Thanks, Kim. I really appreciate all your help as well. When I was in Maryland, I actually spoke at the Maryland State Beekeepers Association with Dr. Cameron Jack from the University of Florida. So together, uh, we had a lot of fun out there speaking uh, to the beekeepers out there. I'm going to show you how to use this mobile pocket app 
to really give you the answers as to whether your bees are sick or not. Because look, let's face it, we're facing a lot of challenges with our bees, both with pests and diseases. John Zavishlak and I have been friends for a lot of years. We've done a lot of beekeeping stuff together. He put together this great booklet that you can actually download right onto your phone and it will help you diagnose any problems that you might see in your colony. I wanna walk you through that. I'll show you where you can download this right to your phone, take it out to the hive with you. I've already tested it out. It works so nicely. It's a PDF file that you download, but it has all these pictures. I wanna show you to you right now. We'll just buzz through it really quickly. I wanna show you how valuable it is to help you make better choices, better decisions, when you might think your bees aren't doing well. It's from the University of Arkansas, the Division of Agriculture Research and Extension. And as you can see in this document, it talks about a little bit of integrated pest management. It talks about parasites and pathogens, nutrition, pesticides, pollution, climate and weather, beekeeping practices. Look at this, talks about reading brood, talks about what you do if you don't have solid brood pattern, but you have a, but if you have a spotty brood pattern. Of course, it talks about varroa mites, and I've talked a lot about that. Look at that, life cycle of the varroa mite. Management, how to use things like organic acids, trickle method of acylic acid, vaporization methods, hops, a lot of you ask me about hops, essential oils, a lot of you are constantly asking me about the use of essential oils, talks about it in here, some genetic mite resistance, we all want our bees to be mite resistant, talks a little bit about that, look at this, drone brood trapping, I made a whole video about using the green drone comb, explanation of that, how to sample for varroa mites. Look at me right there. <laughs> I got a picture of me uh, collecting bees to do a mite test on or doing the alcohol wash for sampling for mites or the sugar shake method or the CO2 sampling method. And this is an older method that some people might still use, sticky board method underneath the screen bottom board. Look at this, talks about trachea mites. And if you didn't know there was another mite, yeah, there is. And there is even tropolalaps, and that mite is not in the U.S. yet, hopefully never. And of course, small hive beetle, we talked about them before, talks about their life cycle and what you can do to cut down on small hive beetles in your colony. And wax moths, wax worms, and just goes on and on. Talks about things like mice, how to keep mice, skunks, and bears out of your hive. And then sac brood. These are things I wanted to get to because some of you may not know what you're looking at when you see something like sac brood. Or what about American fowl brood? Look at that. Can you identify American fowl brood? Or what about European fowl brood? It's important to be able to identify European fowl brood. Chalk brood, you might see that. Stone brood, black queen cell virus, bald brood. What causes bald brood? What about hygienic behavior? What about PMS, parasitic mite syndrome? See these things, you need to have this booklet on your phone so you can identify what you're looking at. Look at this, deformed wing virus, and then per paralysis virus, nosema. We talked about nosema. And that's a real issue today. Now you might be thinking uh, there's K wing. See how the back wing actually uh, goes in front of the front wing. And then of course starvation, winter starvation. Some of you may have already witnessed winter starvation and what that looks like. But um, you know, th this is really gonna be helpful for a lot of you guys because you may not really know what to do when you see something that's a little strange, you may not know who to go to to find out exactly what it is and how bad it is. You might be watching me show you these things and you might be thinking, no, I don't have any of those. I'm never gonna have those. Yeah, you do and you will. It's really rare not to get these. Some of these are more common. Probably the least common one that I see uh, of the things that we looked at in this uh, brochure, it, it would be American Fowl Root. It seems to be the least common, but yet people still get it. But the other things, I would imagine you have probably had that in your hive if you've kept bees any length of time at all. And it may be why your bees perish during the winter or in the late summer or fall. A lot of people ask me, why do my bees die? Well, they don't know how to recognize these things in this pamphlet. Now, again, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below so you can download it, it's free, it doesn't cost you anything. I want you to download it 
into your phone so you can take it out to the hive with you and actually compare what you're looking at uh, and see if you have an issue. Again, you're gonna get some of these, it happens. Bees are gonna contract that by uh, just nature itself. It's gonna present these challenges to bees. You need to be on top of it and know what to do. And this booklet will help you know exactly what to do and how to identify it. I'm helping you really know how to identify these things and be on top of it. So be sure and download it, it's gonna be so helpful. I'm gonna leave a description in the link below as well to uh, Beltsville, Maryland Bee Lab where you can send samples of your bees in. But don't think that you're just throwing bees in a box and they're gonna be fine because look, on average about 50% of colonies are perishing from one of the things that I just showed you in John's booklet. So be sure and get that. And be sure and check out my latest video of me inspecting a colony. If you just wanna walk through a colony inspection with me for a good half hour, I'll show you what I'm looking at and explain things to you. Check this video out, you'll like it. I'll see you in the next video.